Hey everyone, Lou here. So with the massive popularity of this game Detroit Become Human, I thought I'd check out the game, right? I hadn't seen too much gameplay initially. I read the in-depth description of the game's endings and watched countless reviews of this game. With this, I agreed with everyone on the immense negatives of this game. And with that, I strongly disliked it. However, the more Let's Plays I saw of the game, the more my opinion certainly changed. I felt like a damn deviant during the writing of this script because of how much my opinion change throughout it. Now this video isn't really a review, more of an analysis on what I like and don't like about this game. I suppose something similar to my killing stalking video a while back but with a better script and at least some semblance of higher quality. Now why didn't I play this game myself? Well, I'm sort of a money saver and I find it reckless to spend $60 on a game I wasn't sure about. I mean, unless I was paid to play a game, I'm probably not gonna buy a game I'm not keen on unless the game is like $5 or something. So I relied on Let's Plays, multiple videos of other possible endings, and the wiki to guide me into really deciding whether or not my post I made on my community page was right and this game was still bad. Yet, I found myself going further and further against the post I made. Let's start with this stuff about the game, shall we? Roll the intro! Okay, so we're going to go to the positives first. Things I absolutely loved about this game, and even just the little stuff. It probably won't sound like much, but considering the game, trust me, it's a lot. I would also like to state that I'm going to go on the happy ending where everyone lives and becomes deviants at the end, mostly because the game's tone feels like this should have been the ending the player is supposed to choose. I mean, choose your own story games try to act like there's no canon ending, but come on, some clearly want one ending to be canon. Also, spoilers! Yeah! Yay! I absolutely loved Connor and Hank. I desperately wish these two had their own game. These two are undoubtedly the best characters in this game. These two just had amazing chemistry once you get Hank to like you and it's just ah! And like, all hail Connor as best boy of 2018! Connor and Alice's story is also a wonderful part as well. People keep saying that Alice's plot twist that she's an android is really stupid, but it's foreshadowed well enough where it's equally surprising and can be easy to come to that conclusion. I'm a sucker for stories involving parental love and I found this story just truly beautiful. The technology in this game is just super cool. I love that all the magazines are basically just really sleek tablets and everything is holograms and the designs of the tech as well. Can I say I love minimal futuristic designs? The costume design is really well done as well. Jeez, whoever designed the clothing for a game needs an A+, honestly. The graphics are immensely impressive for a PS4. I swear, when I look at some screenshots, it's like I'm seeing a photo of a real person. I mean, some lip sync and emotional expressions come off pretty bad, but hey, it's a step in the right direction at least. Hank is voiced by Mr. Krabs, and that's all we needed in this world. Oh yeah, Mr. Krabs! The soundtrack is amazing as well. Just the sound design in general is wonderful. I especially love the sound effect for broken androids, and the sound design when Marcus wakes up in the robot garbage dump thingy. The world building in general is really, really good here as well. To me, a story's biggest leg to stand on is world building for it's the only way the audience is gonna know what the fuck's going on. Take Final Fantasy 13 as an example where we aren't told literally anything about this world and we have to find out what the fuck's going on via some optional shit in the menu. I do love that your choices really do matter. I love Life is Strange so damn much, I really do, but I can even admit that it doesn't really let your choices have too big an effect and this is a problem with games like this in general. However, I love that your decisions really do matter this time and and one little mistake leads to your character dead in the dumpster. While this list is kinda small, all these are very big parts of this game that I truly enjoyed. It was this list of things that I loved that made me so conflicted to feel the same emotions I initially felt when I first looked into this game. I can't believe BEST BOY OF 2018 made me a deviant of my own decisions. Here's where we got the bad parts. The parts that make me completely remove this game as game of the year for story anyway. The parts with Marcus are so heavy-handed with civil rights and holocaust imagery that you might as well rip your history book and slap it into the script. Like, geez, 
with how creative this game gets with its aesthetics and explanations for things, you really can't make up your own unique way for robots to ask for their rights. Like, jeez, dude. There's nothing wrong with taking a few inspirations and references from real-life civil rights and other equal rights protests and riots, but jeez, dude. There's a difference between lightly picking and just ripping apart a whole damn book of it. If Hank hates androids, then why does he give a fuck if that one female one is killed? Regardless of your relationship with Hank, this literally makes no sense. Hating androids just overall makes no fucking sense. If a doctor was high on drugs caused your son's death, what did an android have to do with it? It really messes up his character who's really brilliantly written already. Why is it not one human is in this group of androids trying to defend them? You're telling me that not one human decided to openly support androids throughout this entire game? This feels hard to believe, especially when Rose said she felt sympathetic to androids because their pleas reminded her of African American slavery. Wouldn't that mean that others would feel the same? It comes off so stupid and just wants to be like, Humans suck! I'll hail the toaster! Why is the US the only country that hates androids pretty much? It doesn't make any sense. We get it. The US freaking sucks, dude. I don't know. I suppose it gets old to be reminded that my maple leaf neighbors are like the super popular girl in school who's really pretty and gets straight A's. While the US is that asshole kid that talks shit about everyone at a five mile radius and wonders why they have no friends. If deviants look exactly like humans, once they remove their LED, there's two problems with this. How has the public and government not gone on full riot considering no one knows who's an android and who's a human? Fallout 4 addresses this kind of idea with the entirety of Diamond City in full panic over who's a synth and who's not. If people did know who's a deviant and who's human, how the fuck do androids not recognize them since it's implied that there's thousands of androids with the same face? I guess twins are the biggest birth rate? If the unemployment rate is 35%, which while small I'm sure is a big number in this game given there's also a population crisis. Hmm, I guess Japan weren't the only ones who wanted to bang robots more than people I see. And how the fuck are people able to buy androids? Like $8,000 is not a lot of money, hell most cars cost that much, but I'm sure for a lot of people with that employment rate that's fucking expensive. So how would Cyberlife make any money? Not to mention Detroit is known for its poverty. I mean that one Eminem song kind of proves that like you know Detroit's kind of like an area with not a lot of people with money. Gosh damn it Eminem, why is it any time someone says your name you have to talk about your mom's spaghetti's ready? Shoot, go away. The entire thing with Marcus being able to free androids really grinds my gears. Okay, sure, I can kind of shrug off Marcus freeing androids just by touching them since Connor kind of does the same thing. However, the scene where he just fucking points at an android and they're free along with Connor being able to do it too later on, it's just, that's so fucking stupid. It's just, what? Why? How? If humans hate androids so fucking much, how the hell do people keep buying these things? Imagine your fur real friend was too real for your liking and had the ability to act like a real baby tiger. Would you fucking buy your fur real friend? No, you don't want a real damn tiger. Overall, the writing for Detroit Become Human is giving me Mystic Messenger vibes, if y'all saw that video a while ago. There's so many ups and downs here, granted it's not like Mystic Messenger where the graph and writing quality looks like the recent season of The Walking Dead TV show, but it's definitely pretty damn close. In comparison to movies, I don't want to say it reaches Blade Runner levels of quality, though I've never fully seen the movie. Blade Runner is certainly one of the highest quality levels of stories about androids having feelings, and is certainly a masterpiece so like, yeah, probably not gonna compare it to that. However, the positive writings for this movie remind me of Ex Machina, which is actually one of my favorite sci-fi thrillers simply because it was brilliantly executed and just a classic for me now. Even in the way some androids are designed, remind me of the android in Ex Machina. A bad with character names, okay? I literally call the scientist guy who made her just Poe if he were Mark Zuckerberg, so I mean... However, when the writing is bad, as I mentioned earlier, it really reminds me of AI. I know not everyone I remember this movie as it's pretty depressing and honestly kind of sucks as it's merging two very different styles of directing and mashing them together which you know Steven Spielberg and Stanley Kubrick work together about as well as mixing ketchup and ranch speaking from personal experience good on their own just never mix them together AI suffered from the same problems I have with Detroit in which it doesn't know how it wants to portray your 2006 Motorola flip phone having feelings either the movie would either be robots are awesome humans suck to 
humans are leading me and robots will never be cool. Which is exactly the same problems Detroit suffers from. I would say at least Detroit doesn't suffer from the tone issues the way AI does. It knows it's angsty as fuck and doesn't put a campy Albert Einstein hologram in the middle of all the grit. I also almost forgot to mention this, but Kara honestly should have been a side story DLC simply because overall she doesn't really have much to do with the main story, which is the robot revolution. So because Kara has like pretty much no involvement, she kind of doesn't belong in the story. So honestly, she should have been like a side story as DLC that players could have gotten to see like, I don't know, the story of a background character, which kind of of sucks because Kara's kind of the whole reason this game was made because of Cage's little short video he made of like a tech demo or something with her and it really sucks. Overall I just have a lot of mixed feelings about Detroit Become Human. I absolutely love some of the characters and there's genuinely brilliant stuff here and I do still really like this game and maybe someday when I have money to throw at games I'm iffy about then maybe I'll buy it and play it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I had fun writing the script for this despite how fucking long it took me to make. If you guys want to see me do more videos like this, let me down below. See you next time!